Hello students and instructors. My name is Nate with Wi-Fi CFI and for today's Tuesday training tip, we are going to be covering the supplemental oxygen rules. Now we're going to be covering the supplemental oxygen rules when you need to essentially use supplemental oxygen for both pressurized and non-pressurized aircraft. Now if you're just going through your flight training right now, you are going to be more concerned with the rules for non-pressurized aircraft. All right. Unless you are flying a pressurized aircraft, then you're going to want to know those. But if you're not, which most likely in your flight training, you're not going to be flying a pressurized aircraft right off the bat. So the first three that we're going to cover, the first three rules here are going to be more applicable to your situation because they will be for non-pressurized aircraft. The last couple are going to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more intense. And again, don't really apply until you start flying pressurized aircraft. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the Federal Aviation Regulations specify the times when crew members and passengers must use or be supplied with supplemental oxygen. There are certain times. At the time of this recording, they are found in FAR 91.211, 91 First, we're going to look at the different altitudes at which you need to use supplemental oxygen and whether it's required for just the crew members which would you know be the pilot and the co-pilot or anybody else in the cockpit and or the passengers the first rule is if you are flying above 12,500 feet to 14,000 feet msl so if you're above 12.5 to 14 you're in that altitude range this is what the regulation says it says no person may operate an aircraft at these altitudes unless the required minimum flight crew is provided with and uses supplemental oxygen for that part of the flight at those altitudes that is of more than 30 minutes duration. In other words, let's take an example. Let's say that we're going to be flying along at 13,000 feet. We're going flying along at 13,000 feet and maybe we're at that altitude for one hour. So for 60 minutes, we, as the minimum flight crew, us as the pilots would have to use oxygen, so don a supplemental oxygen mask and use it for anything that's more than 30 minutes. So if we were flying along at 13,000 feet for 60 minutes, we would have to use the oxygen for the second 30 minutes of flight at that altitude. If we were up there for 90 minutes, then it would have to be for 60 minutes we'd have to use oxygen and so on and so forth. So for the first 30 minutes, that you're above 12.5 but below 14, you don't have to use oxygen, but anything past that 30 minutes, you do have to use oxygen. The other thing I wanna point out before I go on and show you the other altitudes is this right here. Sometimes students can get uh, tripped up on this because it's a really nitpicky detail and we've heard of check right examiners that you know try to catch you or hook you kind of with this really nitpicky detail it is this greater than sign. And in the requirements or in the actual FAR language, you can see at cabin pressure altitudes above 12,500 feet. In other words, maybe you have a check right examiner or maybe it's on a written test question or something like that. And they say, if you're flying along at 12,500 feet for one hour, how long do you need to use supplemental oxygen? And the answer is none of it. If you're right at 12,500 feet, you don't have to use supplemental oxygen. All right, again, this is a nitpicky thing. It says above altitudes at 12,5, greater than 12,5. So if you're at 12,600, sure, then you got to use it. But if you're right at 12,500, you could stay at 12,500 indefinitely and never actually have to use supplemental oxygen. All, right. all of these altitudes I'm about to show you are above altitudes. So they're all above. Okay. This is what it looks like. So if we are above 12.5 but below 14, any time in excess of 30 minutes, the crew has got to have supplemental oxygen. Next one. If we are above 14,000 feet, flying above 14,000, so not at 14,000. If you're at 14,000 feet, you're following these rules that we just discussed. But now if you decide to climb above 14,000 feet, the regulation says that the flight crew is provided with and uses supplemental oxygen during the entire flight time at those altitudes. In other words, if you're going to be flying around at 14.5 or 15,000, 16,000, whatever, any altitude above 14,000 feet MSO, the flight crew has to use oxygen for the entire duration above that flight. 
Awesome. Next one, above 15,000 feet now. It says no person may operate an aircraft at cabin pressure altitudes above 15,000 feet MSL unless each occupant of the aircraft is provided with supplemental oxygen. So now we're not just talking about the flight crew, we're talking about the passengers and everybody else. They must be at least provided with oxygen and have the opportunity to use, to don and use supplemental oxygen if they wish if you're going to be flying above 15,000 feet. However, they just have to be provided it. They don't actually have to use it. If they decline and they say, I don't want it, you know, maybe you're flying like 16,000 feet, 18,000 feet, and for whatever reason they say, I don't want the oxygen, all right, they don't have to have it. Okay, but they have to at least be provided that opportunity to have supplemental oxygen. And that's above 15,000 feet. Now, in general, those are the three that you're going to have to know as you're going through flight training. Those are the three different altitude uh, zones. So you got above 12, so you got 12.5 to 14,000, and then you got above 14,000, and then you got this rule we just talked about above 15,000. The next ones I'm going to talk about are a little bit more advanced, and they're more for you know part 135 and part 121 operations and operations with pressurized aircraft. All right. When you're flying along in your flight training, you're probably not flying in a pressurized aircraft or in these kinds of flight training environments. So these next couple of slides won't really apply to you until you've gotten a little further in your aviation career. But we are going to go ahead and cover them here just in case they are applicable to you. So the next one is above flight level 250 or 25,000 feet MSL ish. It's not actually 25,000 feet MSL. Depends on the day. We just call it, or the regulations just call it flight level 250. That's a discussion for a whole nother time. We're not going to get into that here. But it says, at flight altitudes above flight level 250, unless a 10-minute supply of supplemental oxygen, in addition to any oxygen required to satisfy paragraph A of this section, is available for each occupant of the aircraft for use in the event that a descent is necessitated by loss of cabin pressurization. So you must have at least 10 minutes if you're in a pressurized aircraft with a pressurized cabin. If you want to fly above flight level 250, you got to have at least 10 minutes of oxygen that can be provided to each occupant of the aircraft. And that is for, in case we're flying along and we have depressurization of some sort and we need to make a rapid descent, at least the passengers can go ahead and put on oxygen for that rapid descent and they are still safe. And again, we're going to talk about depressurization towards the end of this lesson here, the different types. Above flight level 350, it says no person may operate an aircraft with a pressurized cabin at flight altitudes above flight level 350 unless one pilot at the controls of the airplane is wearing and using an oxygen mask that is secured and sealed and that either supplies oxygen at all times or automatically supplies oxygen whenever the cabin pressure altitude, so not the outside altitude, but the cabin pressure altitude of the airplane exceeds 14,000 feet. So if there's just one pilot at the controls, you're flying above flight level 350, you have got to be, or well, sorry, one pilot at the controls needs to be wearing an oxygen mask that will either continuously give oxygen to the pilot or if the cabin pressure altitude raises above 14,000 feet because of depressurization, uh, you know, the cabin pressurization is not working, so that cabin pressure altitude gets above 14,000, then it starts to give them oxygen. That's above flight level 350. So technically, above this altitude, one pilot's got to be wearing a mask for the entire flight above this altitude. However, there is kind of one little exception here. This is the above flight level 350 exception. It says, except that one pilot need not wear and use an oxygen mask while at or below flight level 410 if there are two pilots at the controls and each pilot has access to a quick donning oxygen mask. So now, if we're between these altitudes, flight level 350 and flight level 410 or below that, we've got two pilots in the cockpit and each pilot has access to a quick donning mask, then they don't need to wear a mask while flying at these altitudes. They don't need to have that supplemental oxygen. Okay, We will talk about what a quick donning mask is in just a little bit. It's basically just a mask that you can grab very quickly, which is one hand, flip it on your face, and you have oxygen within five seconds. So it's a, it's a very quick mask you can put on. So both pilots have access to one of those. They don't have to be wearing them, but if they both have access to them and there's two pilots in the cockpit, then you don't need to have oxygen in this flight level range. 
Now, what if one pilot decides to go to the bathroom, right? He says, oh, okay, I gotta, you know, run back and, and use the restroom. So he leaves the cockpit. Well, now there's only one pilot at the flight controls. So he's gotta put the mask on. All right. There's one more additional rule for flying above at flight level 350. If for any reason, at any time, it is necessary for one pilot to leave the controls of the aircraft, like I just said, to go to the restroom or something like that, when operating at flight levels above 350, the remaining pilot at control shall put on and use the oxygen mask until the other pilot has returned to the crew member station. So if one pilot leaves, the second pilot's got to put the mask on. All right. Again, when you're going through flight training, it's really just the first three rules, not the rules that we've just talked about with pressurized aircraft, pressurized cabins that will apply to you, typically. All right. Once you get a little further in your training, you'll hear these when you start, you know, working in the pressurized cockpits, you know, in the 135, the 121 environments, you'll start to hear these things and these rules. And that's why we wanted to cover them because it'll trigger in your mind, hey, I've heard this before. I understand what they're talking about. But as far as going through flight training, you know, flying small, single engine, general aviation aircraft, you're not going to be getting into these flight levels anyways. And your air cabin's not pressurized. And that wraps up our supplemental oxygen rules and our Tuesday training tip for this week. However, we have tons of tips and tricks and tons of hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of hours of free content on our website at wificfi.com and on our mobile app. You can download the mobile app by just following the instructions again on our website at wificfi.com. So you can come over, you can listen to full length audiobooks, you can see a ton of uh, short clips, tips and tricks like these. We've got free podcasts and we also have thousands of free aviation study flashcards that you can use to quiz yourself. Thank you for joining us on this one and we'll see you on the next one next week.